question is from Johnny Olives. How would you guys recommend trying to address insecurities in yourself? Oh, yeah. You know what's a telltale way of knowing whether or not you have an insecurity? Is how how much does a criticism about a particular yeah. thing how defensive do you get yes yeah. like if you know like if somebody came up to me and was like you know you're you're fat you know and i'm always been skinny my whole life i'd be like well, doesn't phase yeah. me at all yeah. you know what Ooh. i mean so it's like the the criticisms that you get that really affect you were like and maybe they're not even criticisms pump someone just makes a comment but you're really heated or bothered about it by it yeah that's probably an insecurity 100% and to that point this is why when I feel that in myself, I put myself in those situations to learn to deal with it. For example, uh, calves, 100% was been a sore spot in my life forever. <laughs> so I'm now the guy who will even wear shorts in the wintertime. Like I will, You're always showing yeah. off your calves. Yeah, I will. I will wear. I will wear my my shorts all the time because I I I want to make myself comfortable with people talking shit, saying things to me like me looking in the mirror, going, oh, feeling like I'm I'm gonna get reps, just like anything. I want to get reps with that insecurity to where it becomes something that's no longer an insecurity for mm -hmm. me. So I I think that is perfect Sal like you, you when you can tell that it, it bothers you and then you yeah. take that say okay right now in the last uh, two years right so uh, I've always talked about one of the things that motivated me to get in uh, into shape and to work out was being insecure about being skinny and small so of course when I go from imagine you know being uh, all steroided up being a bodybuilder making it all the way up to the pro level jacked looking amazing and then now going the opposite direction like I've in, I intentionally put myself in this. I'm not going to try and hang on to every pound of muscle and focus on getting bigger. I'm I'm going to get lean and mobile and limber and and be comfortable with being skinny, Adam, or whatever, or what I perceived as skinny, right? Because mm -hmm. the average person probably looks at my physique and doesn't think I'm skinny, but mm -hmm. that's how my brain works. And so I put myself in that, and I can I will continually challenge things that I think are potential insecurities. That's to me, that's the only way I've ever learned to get through those yeah. things is to embrace head it embrace oh, yeah. it for go after Present it, it first. Right. That, that's what I've learned over the over the years of growing up and like being teased all the time for being like, you know, like super, super ghostly white, for instance. That <laughs> that that used to be like something that was just I mean, everybody had to bring that out, you yeah. know, and they're just like pointing that out on me. And I'm like, wow, I guess that's true. You know, and like, I'm like, well, fuck. So if I ever take my shirt off or go to the beach, I'm just like, hey, guys, you ready for the second sun? You know, throw my shirt off and, and just like you got to acknowledge it right away. And then everybody's just like, ah, and then and then it doesn't come up again. And then it's just like, who gives a shit? One of the things that has made uh, the three of us kind of invincible uh, to hate uh, on social media or or wherever is that we have a lot of self depreciating humor and there's oh, not you ain't, yeah you ain't going to pick on us as as hard as we pick on each other right You're and going to get close and it, and and yeah. we pick on the Bring things it. we know are insecurities of each other totally, totally. we we and uh and the, I love that about each of us is that um, we that's we half the game is trying to find them right a couple of right. assholes we over we, we know that and um and so it's funny because if if someone does like attempt to kind of hate on us it's like you you do if they do they do something that's like not even a, a soft spot it's like it's not funny at all it's like it's a weak it's a weak attack and you can't because we've already presented it we've already attacked it we've already admitted it we've already laughed at each other and poked at each other with it and right. so a lot of that really helps when you're somebody who is battling or doing that instead of hiding from it mm -hmm. running from it trying to uh, it, you know avoid it, it like it, take it, only, it head on it only hurts when yeah. you believe it you know what i mean like if somebody says something negative about you and you believe totally. that negative thing yes well well that's going to fucking hurt your feelings but if they say something to you negative that you don't believe because you're confident in that in yourself um, it doesn't bother you at all. It reminds me of when I would hang out with, uh, like pro fighters, you know, we'd go out and, you know, guys would bump into them or say something. Yeah. And some of the most secure, like these are guys that could wipe the floor with pretty much anybody that they bump into. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, Oh, excuse me, no problem. And they, like, they were never threatened. They'd never want to start shit. And it was because they were super confident in their own. They didn't feel any threat. Well, even if, at you, all. even if you do feel it, like, you know, I I just I wrote something that I'm going to post uh, soon 
uh, on emotional intelligence. And I feel like there's not enough conversation. We focus so much on IQ. Very few people talk about the importance of emotional intelligence and self-awareness and social awareness. I've learned now, like, if something even does sting or it bothers me or whatever with that is like, I kind of grin at it and it's like, oh, wow, that that's enlightening. I didn't know that would bother me or that affect me. And that's something now I've learned about myself and I have something to work on, to grow, to improve. So when you have those moments of feeling, instead of like being afraid of them or trying to deny them or ignore them, like accept them like, oh, wow, that's mm. enlightening. I And I, Katrina and I even have this in our, our relationships. One of the things I love about her is, you know, her and I will be saying something back and forth, talking, maybe we're even arguing or debating something. And one will say the other and, you know, her or I will stop the conversation and be like, hey, that stung a little, you know, like, and then it's not her saying that, hey, Adam, that stung a little, you're an asshole for saying that. She'll also stop and go like, why did that bother me so mm -hmm. much? You know, why did that bother me so much that you said that? Because I know you weren't trying to hurt me when you said that, but that offended me. And I'm now, I'm, then you find me apologizing for doing that because my intentions weren't to, to hurt. And then, then you see her starting to unpack, where is that rooted from? And so, when I feel like the soft dick comment I got the other day, that was fucking yeah. epic. I yeah. and 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 I, what was so epic about it, I was like, wow, that could have several meanings that could totally insult. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, there's so many layers. To yeah, that. It, it was. It was so. And like, I wish I would have thought of that. And instead of me uh, getting mad and going down the rabbit hole with this chick and you know insulting her more, I complimented her. I said, man, I didn't want to like you, but because you came up with such a good yeah. insult great, for me. Great burn. Yeah, I like you now. Yeah. Like, And so I think you got to learn to reframe uh, insecurities and things like it, that it, as growth opportunities. You just have to be honest about them. It's interesting because as a kid, I was very insecure about being skinny. And then I would hear other people, girls in particular, talk about wanting to be skinny. And I, remember, and, and I would hear that and they'd be like, why, why don't you want to be skinny? I want to be skinny. That's a great, I mean, think like that word meant such a different thing to me, and it was because it was one of my insecurities. So, and now this is not easy. You know, you, if somebody hurts your feelings, right. you want to defend yourself right away, but it takes a set, you, you got to stop. But like, why do I want to fight back so hard on that insult? Why does that piss me off so much? Do I believe it to be true? Maybe I do. Maybe that's why it hurts so much. And then kind of go down that route. And it's a, it, it presents itself as a challenge in our life. And bo life would be boring as fuck if it had no challenges and things for you to work on. So, you know, when it when it presents itself like that, awesome. It's something. I, there by no means does anybody in this room not have insecurities. We all do. And I I, and I often new ones present themselves. It doesn't like. It's not like you find one or two insecurities. You think those are your own insecurities. You fix them and you don't have them anymore. Fucking something else will pop up. Oh, yeah. you know now that, especially now that you have a, a son. You know, as your kids grow up, you start to see your own insecurities. You know what I mean? Like, oh my yeah. god, are they? And you have your own insecurities, and they might have different ones than you, but you think that they're going to have the same ones as you. You know what yeah, I mean? I, my, I have a client who's, uh, you know, she's in her mid fifties, and we were just talking about this. We we share a common insecurity, and and we were talking about this and. Uh, and it's similar because uh, she didn't finish her degree. I didn't finish my degree. Um, she's an extremely successful woman. And she's a around a lot of people with PhDs and masters all the time. And she goes, you know, I don't know why it is still to this day that, you know, I, I get in a situation. And when I'm around those people, I get very insecure about my level of education. Mm -hmm. And it's I'm like, it's so crazy that you feel that way because you're such a successful person. I have the same one. I get in rooms with a bunch of people that have a bunch of acronyms after their name. And I find myself, you know, having to share my bankroll or talk about the success that I've had in business to feel like I'm at their level. That's a total insecurity. And I'm very aware of that. And knowing that it's something I'm always working on. And I don't beat myself up when I make the mistake. I think it was just maybe a couple months ago, I was in another room like that again. And I caught myself sharing the success of mind pump or whatever. And I'm like, why the fuck did I do that? They didn't ask for it. You know what I'm saying? They didn't ask like, cause I'm there's, there's a difference between sharing information when someone directly asks you like, Hey Adam, we're, how's mind pump doing with this or that? Mm -hmm. And then there's the me giving that information because it's like walking into a room and be like, yeah. Hey, what's up? My name's Sal. So I could bench 315. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what? It's totally like <laughs> that, but it like a different, so yeah, I think no big deal, <laughs> but I, it, it's not something that, um, because of it, I don't shy away from those rooms. In fact, I put myself in those situations more often, and then I challenge myself to to shut up. And just because I'm in a room of a lot of other successful or intelligent men and women, I don't need to peacock and talk about how successful and, I am. And what other people think mm. is none of your business anyway. Oh, yeah. So there you go.